Hi everyone, this is Rachel from Sunbear Glasscraft, and in today's video I wanted to talk about five common beginner mistakes and how to fix them. For today's video I've actually created two demonstration pieces. One is going to be the piece just kind of incorporating all of the mistakes that I've seen just through my time browsing the internet, and the other demonstration piece is how I suggest that you fix those issues. As with everything that I do, I do not mean anything with ill intent. So if you do some of these things, please just take this as like a constructive criticism because all I wanna do is help people learn and grow. Before we get into today's video, I also want to say thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to me. I did not imagine that I would be able to get to 2,000 subscribers this quickly, so thank you all so much for following along and for posting all the good questions and liking and all of that good stuff. It is just so mind-blowing to me how much support I've received, so thank you, thank you, thank you! Before we get into the actual instruction of the video, I wanted to show you my two demonstration pieces that I created. This is the piece that I made just as I would normally, and then this is the demonstration piece with the five beginner errors in it. We'll be covering these beginner mistakes chronologically, so the first thing we're going to look at is mismatched pieces and kind of uneven edges. Now, of course, I'm not entirely certain what might be causing this to happen in a lot of beginner pieces that I see, but I speculate that it's either because they're not using a pattern to compare to whenever they're grinding, or it might also come down to um, drawing skill, which unfortunately that's not something that I can fix. But as you can see here, there's just a lot of pieces that don't match up and there's a lot of gaps. And when there's a lot of gaps, if we turn this over, you can see that because these pieces don't fit together properly, there's huge gaps and you're going to need a lot more solder to fix those gaps. Now, to get pieces to fit together properly, a lot of this actually comes from the cutting process and not the grinding process. You shouldn't be doing that much work whenever you're grinding. So as you can see here, I cut the bottom piece a lot more diligently than I did the top piece. And because of this, before I even started grinding, the pieces already fit together better. If you're still working on cutting and you're still trying to learn cutting, then that is totally fine and what we can do is lean more heavily into our grinder and allow the grinder to do more of the work for us. But this is why having a pattern to put the pieces on and compare it to is super important because otherwise you're just kind of making it up as you go and it can be really hard to get exact precision with your pieces lining up. Now, if drawing skill is the problem, there are plenty of free programs, and I will link the one that I used to use in the description box below. The next beginner mistake we're going to look at is uneven foil. Foiling does take a little bit of time to get used to, but here are some tips to help you foil and help improve it whenever you're just starting out. I absolutely recommend getting a foil caddy because otherwise your foil isn't going to have anything to stay upright in and you're going to have a really hard time lining up the edges of your foil. Um, I inherited this one, I'm not sure how much they are, but I will link one in the description box below. And what I do is make sure I am in a very well lit space. I'm going to apply, start applying my foil and then I'm going to pull the foil taut and as you can see there's going to be a lot of tension on this foil as I am applying it and this is going to allow me, see tension, yay, this is going to allow me to line it up better and be able to visualize each side of the foil and how it looks against the glass. If you're just starting out, it can really help to close one eye to help you visualize it better and just really take your time with it. Although I'm going to share what I do and I hope that I'm going to be able to describe this properly. Whenever I'm foiling, I don't actually look at the exact spot I'm foiling. I don't hyper focus on one spot in particular. Instead, I'm trying to take the average of what I'm looking at and I tend to look more directly at the foil itself instead of the edge of the glass. This is extremely hard to describe and I've seriously tried to record this audio like 15 times now, so I really hope that I have gotten my point across. This is something that's probably just going to have to come with time while you figure it out and I'm sure not everyone's eyes uh, process this the same way. This is just kind of how I foil. The next common mistake I see is the wrong foil size being used, and this might actually just come down to personal preference, but whenever I apply my foil, I like for about 1.5 millimeters to be showing, and this is something I eyeball, I don't measure this every time. 
I do tend to use a smaller foil for my detailed pieces, like on my pet portraits around the eyes, but for the most part, I use 730 seconds. Uh, that's kind of just gonna be your bread and butter foil size. Although if your glass is thicker, you're going to have to use a quarter inch, and if it's thinner, you should use 3 16 The fourth beginner mistake we're going to be looking at is not using enough solder. I have seen this in so many beginner pieces, so really what I think is that people are just kind of scared to put more solder on, but really don't be scared to lay it on thick. Um, even if you put too much on, you can melt it off and you can just like kind of fling it off to the side. Don't fling hot solder, just you get what I'm saying. <laughs> What we're looking for is a nice bead, and some stained glass artists lay it on thicker than others. I know a few off the top of my head that their solder is just thick. Uh, mine, I think it's just pretty average, sometimes it's thicker, but you really want to not have any of your dips and divots showing. Um, as you can see here, it just almost looks concave, and we do not want that. There's quite a few things that go into solder, and I think that it's kind of a mixture of people not using enough flux, not using enough solder, and also not having an iron that's hot enough. Soldering is very complicated, so I know that this is five beginner mistakes, and what I just said was three in itself just for the soldering, but I think that it would be kind of doing you a disservice if I didn't mention all of the factors that go into making a beautifully soldered piece. As you can see in this video, I am going in as many times as I need to to really make sure I'm getting the bead that I want. Keep in mind that the more times you apply solder to a specific solder line um, and the thicker the solder is, you will probably have to go in and apply flux again because you'll have a hard time melting it down. Just really don't be afraid to keep adding solder. You can, like I said, um, if you get too much, you can kind of tilt your piece to the side, like hold it up on its side at maybe a 45 degree angle and just melt it down. Um, you will potentially mess up another solder line if it, you know, brushes against that, but at least you're not gonna have like this big thick glob of solder on your piece. I wanna show you the first piece that I ever made and just show you how many little mistakes that I made. Um, as you can see, the bead was not very good. There's just kind of rough patches everywhere. So please do not get discouraged if you're just starting out. Um, I promise that it will get easier the more you practice. And I have put literally hundreds of hours into my soldering to get where I'm at now. So just keep practicing and I promise it will get easier. The final beginner mistake that I'll be discussing is people not polishing their work. Polishing is very important for preventing oxidation or slowing down oxidation really, as well as just making your stained glass super pretty. If you don't polish your stained glass very quickly, um, there are things that can happen where um, I know that I've waited like five days to polish something before, and this was just something small that I made, like a prototype, and very quickly it gets like this white stuff on the solder, which I believe is oxidation, but just polish your pieces and it is going to ensure that not only your patina stays bright for a very long time, but if you don't use patina, it's just going to make your solder super shiny and healthy. All right, well that just about does it for today's video. I hope all of these tips help you along your stained glass journey. And of course, if you ever have any questions or video suggestions, please feel free to comment down below. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I also have my Patreon and PayPal linked down below if you'd like to help support me in that way. I hope all of your projects are going well and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.